Hi everybody, I want to use this tutorial to create awareness of a huge problem today that is bullying. There is no specific age or place for it to happen and I just want to leave a short message to all the bullies out there. The tears you see so clearly in this little girl's face are inside all of us grown-ups. We just learn how to control our emotions. It does not mean they aren't there, male or female. If you're searching for more confidence by bringing other people down, let me tell you that you're not gonna get it. Confidence is right inside you. I also would like to leave a question. What kind of sick satisfaction do you get by trying to destroy others with your sharp words day after day? Well, that being said, let's move on to our project. I decided to record the whole process and try to add uh, minimum speed to it. Uh, so this part is very important. Uh, try not to, to make uh, very heavy lines when tracing your design. Uh, because tears are very... Uh, they live uh, from the surroundings and from refraction and reflection of light. That's how you can see them um, and sometimes the, this distortion uh, of the texture below them. Because they are completely transparent. So, uh, don't forget, don't make very heavy lines. And like I said, they live from the surroundings. So, let's build the surroundings first to make them come alive. Uh, and that's what I started by doing. Um, they, we can also see them because they cast this little shadow. Uh, it, it's, it's a mix of light and shadow uh, because they have no texture, they have no color, uh, so that's how we can see it. Uh, what this goes to, to a water drop, to anything that is completely transparent, um, you can only see it by light and a little bit of shadow. So I started uh, creating this uh, eye texture. This one was, uh, I thought this was an easier one, but it actually wasn't. Um, I, th I believe the other one had more texture. Uh, I don't know, it was easier for me to, to make the other tier than this one. Um, because it, it's such a subtle uh, volume that it was hard to achieve uh, along with uh, all the other texture and volume of the eye. And I decided to represent also all the, that uh, wet eye um, reflection uh, that is also uh, a very important uh, thing about uh, about tears, about crying. Um, both things combined uh, will tell you that the subject was crying uh, because I usually don't use color uh, or you could use some redness uh, in the eye. Um, this part uh, actually I didn't, I don't think it was uh, that hard to do. Also, don't, uh, I've used uh, temperature 2, uh, 2 and a half uh, in everything. This is also a uh, plywood, pine plywood, so it is very, very soft. And I used a spear shader and a shader spoon. Um, 
I started by using a round, uh, I'm sorry, I used a round, uh, round point shader and a spoon shader because I, I feel that uh, what you get with the spoon shader is much um, softer than with the other tip so I started with the other tip I, I don't usually use it that much um, and then finished uh, with the spoon shader For the second tier, uh, I used the same process, but this time I used only uh, the spoon shader. Uh, I don't uh, work very good with uh, the round uh, shader, so I started the process as I did for the other one, uh, by the surroundings. and. This side uh, was over some wood texture, so it was a little bit harder to to make this. Uh, but I think it was easier than the other one because it has um, this volume and uh, more light. I think um, I think it has a kind of shape uh, by the light and shadow. Uh, it gives it that round shape uh, that we usually see uh, or imagine uh, in a tear. So I believe it was much easier to to represent. So I did the surroundings. Uh, to make it come alive um, and then started uh, darkening the, uh, the surroundings and adding a little volume to it since this side of the face is a, the brighter side uh, you won't have much uh, information there uh, on the cheek so this was the nose part and then I moved to the eye again uh, this is a, a, a very soft wood so the temperature I used was between two and two and a half it was all I needed and yes I was able to do uh, this dark all these um, grades, all these shades. Uh, so it will depend on the wood you are using, if it is as soft as this one, and depends on your machine, of course. I'm using the Optima one, so, and with this wood, I used between two and two and a half. Try to use the lower setting you you can because this is so subtle uh, that if you burn darker than it should uh, it will look strange now you can see me here going over the grain the wood grain and it was a little bit hard
Now at this point I decided to go back to the other one because I was not pleased with the result and I tried to soften and add more texture to the surroundings and I still made some changes after I ended the recording so the picture I will place at the end of the video may not be exactly like uh, uh, the result you see until the end of the video because this one really bothered me I I don't know I was much pleased with the other with the other tier than with this one um, Like I do in all the work, um, I'm adding some white. Uh, this, uh, this is a, a Carandash um, white uh, coloring pencil. I use this one for uh, sh uh, smaller areas. Uh, for bigger areas, I usually use a pastel. Uh, because I can smudge it with my finger and it's easier to, to work with big areas. With small details and small areas I usually use this one. I hope this helps you in any way and if you like the video don't forget to subscribe and click the little bell so you get notifications and thank you so much for watching and see you in the next video.